Hi Willy Thistlers, it's Rachel from Barkland Croft in Fair Isle. But as you can see, I am not in Barkland Croft and I'm not in Fair Isle. I am here in uh, a little village near Loch Lomond with my family for a few days. And something you don't ever see in my videos from Fair Isle. There are trees. One thing I do just want to say a quick apology for is the lack of communication lately. Um, who'd have thought that uh, where we were based just outside of Edinburgh had the worst internet ever. Um, I couldn't even download my photos from my phone onto my laptop um, and it's taken ages till we've actually left Edinburgh for me to be able to send this video to Corinne and Maggie. Um, I'm very slowly trying to catch up on emails and comments and things too so please do bear with me and it's not that I'm ignoring you I just haven't had the internet capacity to be able to access emails and messages if you want to help. The super moon at the very end of August meant that for the first couple of days of September the tides were really really low in Fair Isle so here I am at about 5.30 in the morning down at the beach so we could see what we could see and there were lots of jellyfish that had been washed up, a few different kinds. The seabirds were quite happy because it meant they could access more rocks and little insects and things. And there were even some sea anemones out. It was also good to take some photos to show you how the bird observatory rebuild is progressing. Back on the croft, Sage wanted to say hello and show off his cheeky side, which as you can see, he definitely gets from his dad, Busby. A few of you after my last video asked whether the caddy lambs had gone out to market and the answer is no, they are definitely here for life. So there we've got Rosebud, Mini Milk and Mary. And as you can see, they have grown so much over the last few months. All doing really well, really happy. And there's Humpty. They live in with him and he really likes their company, I think. And here's little Brandywine and his mum, Rainbow Bright. The start of September brought some great weather to Fair Isle, thankfully, and it really helped the vegetables in the garden to grow and ripen. There have been some fantastic colours and textures on the plants this year. And it's been really wonderful, finally, to start harvesting them and eating them for my dinners. The weather can still be unpredictable, however, and uh, we had one day where I was looking forward to a day of 14, 15 degree temperatures, 0% chance of rain all day, and this is what we ended up with. <laughs> One morning at the end of August, I woke up, pulled the curtains back and spotted this yow and two lambs quite happily walking down the road. So grabbed some clothes on, got a bucket of feed and uh, walked them back up the road to where they were meant to be. And wouldn't you know it, about a week later, opened the bedroom curtains again, same yow and lambs quite happily again walking down the road so it was a another return journey for them we then had our hottest day of the year and the hottest september day on record for fair isle where temperatures reached about 19 degrees c as you can see from ruffalo sunbathing there's still some beautiful colors in the garden and some really pretty plants uh, around the garden at chapel as well.
The 10th of September marked the 100th anniversary of the unveiling of Feral's War Memorial, which commemorates the Feral men who lost their lives in both the First and Second World Wars. The children laid 100 flower petals around the memorial to mark this occasion. My friend Greg has come to house sit for me whilst I'm away and we had a really lovely walk around South Light and up to Gungelsund, the Isle Swimming Pool, which is available to see as a video for my patrons on my Patreon site. We also spotted the super jellyfish swimming in the sea. Unfortunately, all the planes were cancelled on the day I was meant to fly out, but luckily the weather was really good the following day, so we were packed and ready to go. Here's Nieva and her dog crate being loaded in, and that's where she and the luggage and Ruffalo the cat are. And that's me looking very pleased to be getting off aisle. After taking Ruffalo to her vet's appointment, we had a really lovely visit to Shetland Textile Museum, where I knitted a few rows on the Muckle Gravit, which is a really long scarf that visitors can knit a few rows on and see how long it will get to. We parked up near Sumberhead Lighthouse for the night, and I think it's fair to say we all slept pretty well that night. These two raring to go the following morning. It was a bit of a drizzly day in Lerwick Town Centre, but there was a huge cruise ship visiting, so it was quite busy. Lots of the shops had window displays ready for Shetland Wool Week, including this absolutely beautiful one, which I've taken a video of for you here. Jameson's of Shetland also had a couple of great windows, including this Harry Potter Diagon Alley themed one. Shetland Museum and Archives had a small exhibition of Dutch fishing ganses and some lovely little knitted herrings. There were also these very cute models of sheep that had been made by school children, which I thought would give you a smile. And the lace work on the sails of this model yacht were absolutely stunning. After dropping Ruffalo off at the vets for her operation, we went over to Bressa, which is the island just about a seven minute ferry ride across the water from Lerwick. One of my favourite places to visit there is the Speldyburn Centre, which has a fantastic thrift store, lots of second hand books for sale and does amazing cakes and coffee. This one that I had was a rhubarb cake. After a night of rain and gales, Somebody wasn't too keen on getting up the following morning, but it was a lovely sunny day and great to sit and watch the seals for a while. We got a phone call from the vets to say that we could go and pick up Ruffalo, 
They were really pleased with how the operation went. Unfortunately, she had an ulcerated eyeball, so she had to have one of her eyes removed, but she is doing absolutely brilliantly. That night we sailed south on the North Link and here we are going past Fair Isle where I think people were wondering what I was doing as I was stood out on deck waving to my sheep. Then it was back into the camper van and eventually we made it to Edinburgh where we met up with my mum who I've not seen in over four years. Ruffalo and Nieva soon made themselves quite at home as you can see. And then Ruffalo had a very exciting day where we went on a bus to take her to the vet for a checkup, who were really pleased with her eye. My sister and brother-in-law arrived from America, and again, we've not seen them in over four years, so we were really excited, especially Nieva. I finished the Argyle sweater that I'd been hand-knitting as a present for my mum. I hadn't been able to share my progress on it with you because my mum watches these videos and I wanted it to be a surprise for her, but was really pleased with how it turned out. I also knit a Halloween themed jumper for my sister and a Christmassy jumper for my brother-in-law and I think they were all quite pleased with them. Whilst in Edinburgh, I visited Ginger Twist Studio and spent an hour with Jess at her wonderful wool shop. She has the most beautiful selection of yarns there and hand dyed yarns which she dyes herself. Very kindly, Jess agreed to be interviewed by me and although the interview is too long to include in this video, I will be sure to share it on my Patreon page with my patrons in the very near future. And finally for September, whilst we were waiting for a bus to take us to one of our favourite thrift store areas in Edinburgh, we spotted this gorgeous knitted display on a fence by a church, all sea themed with turtles, seahorses, fish, octopuses, absolutely wonderful, really made us smile. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. My apologies for the croaky voice. Um, I haven't been too well this last while, unfortunately, um, but feeling much better now. And hopefully you've still been able to understand what I've been saying. I'll look forward to seeing you again next month. Bye bye.